Uh, hey Siri, shut up! Um. <sighs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Co where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today we're going to be getting React into our Webflow project, so if you're excited about that then uh, stick around. So we see a lot of requests trying to get React in our Webflow projects and asking if it's possible or, you know, how can we do this? And right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that we cannot get like React as it's intended to be used directly in our Webflow projects. The benefit of React is to have an interactive, reactive application uh, that can store things like state, which is sort of uh, the easiest way to, I can describe that as like memorizing, um, you know, a list of items or what a user is doing, interactions and various things like that. We can store that, those things in state and then have those reflect in the interface of our application. So fundamentally, React is not intended to be used in a sort of no code um, environment like, like Webflow. Having said that, I think I've come up with an interesting way of how we can get React into our Webflow projects and be able to design our React components within, um, within Webflow. Uh, it is a bit of a workaround, and like I say, it's not really intended on how React is to be used, but I'm hoping that um, it at least bridges that gap and gives us something to, to sort of work with. It's important to know that React is what we call like a single page application. Uh, that means it's rendered um, with, on the page after the page loads and that everything that you do is happening within that application. Now, the benefit of React is that you can build a whole website using this, this library, um, but you can also build just individual components and that's, that's what we can do here. It's really important to know that because it renders after the page that actually it's not particularly SEO friendly. In my company, we typically build React applications when there's a user login or a sign-in or something like that where we don't need to worry about SEO because SEO does take a hit with uh, React, not only because it renders after the page, and you might say that Google is, does render this JavaScript on a page, and that's very true, but there's also a performance overhead with something like React in the initial load, which Google doesn't like. So I'm, I'm, although it's getting better at reading these websites, there is a performance hit. So I'm leaning more towards that actually using React is detrimental to your SEO. Having said that, if you wanna build something that's really interactive and quite fun and you don't need to worry about SEO, then of course React is definitely something you can enjoy. So by following this tutorial, I hope we can discuss a few concepts and try and get uh, React into our, our Webflow project. And hit me up because I, I foresee this being a bit of a series. Hit me up if you wanna see that series. Uh, and so without further ado, let's jump right into the code. So the way I envision using React in something like Webflow is actually pre-creating your components, right? In what I what I've what is commonly used as a style guide for your Webflow project. And if you don't know what a style guide is, it's just a simple page containing all your headers, all of the variations of certain things, all your buttons. And really it's a way for someone to come into a Webflow project and understand all the different components and everything that they can use and the classes that need to be applied to them. And so when you've got buttons or whatever that's all over the website, they all use the same classes. And then if you need to change that for whatever reason, Reason, you go into your style guide and then you'll make the change in the style guide and then that will propagate across the whole website. So in case you didn't know what style guides are for or, or how they can be useful, then that's kind of it. So what I've done in my style guide, I've created a simple component here. Looks like garbage, but essentially this is what I want my React component to look like. So this really does form the foundation of what we need to what we need to do before we get React into our into our website. So create your component and how, how it needs to look. And now when we create our component and like I say we want to go back over this component and, and edit it in Webflow, we can use the powerful Webflow interface to change things and then that will then be reflected into our React application. So there's my happy medium that I feel like we can use React but also use Webflow and combine the two. So let's jump into it and let's uh, let's start doing this. 
first thing we need to do is to create an area in which to render our React component, right? So I'm gonna create a div block here. And what you commonly do is add an, a div block with an ID of something like app. Now this can be anything you want. It can be a class, it can be an ID, um, it can be whatever. The point is we just need to give it something that we can load the React project into. And the reason why using an ID is really, really beneficial here is because there should only, as we've said many times before, there should be only one instance of any ID on the page. If you were to use a class or something like that, then you might end up reusing that class and then you've loaded two applications into two separate sort of divs or whatever. So an ID is really recommended here when choosing how to load in your React application. We need to go into custom code and actually load in React. So I'm just gonna do it here just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and we can load it at the end of the body if we should choose to. Now I've got the CDN links here and you can just, you know, you can Google that um, CDN, React, whatever. And what you want is the minified version because of course we, uh, we, we don't want the large version because it's gonna take longer to download and all the rest of it. So now that we've got the React libraries into our project, we wanna add a third one called Babel or Babel. And what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to use the, the syntax that we need to write as part of our React components, including classes and things like that. So now we get on to actually writing our code. So the first thing we of course need to do is add our JavaScript script uh, tags. But what we want to do is we want Babel to take over um, this, this text block. So what we can do is go text Babel. The first thing we need to do is load React DOM. And this is something we've got from this, the React DOM library here. And it has a render method that we need to call. And the first argument that this takes is simply a React component that we want to load into our area. So we're going to start with a class and we're going to name this app extends react dot component and what react does it calls a render method on this component so we need to create that render method and what this render method should return is some uh, what they call J JSX code it looks like HTML it's not quite HTML but it looks like HTML so we need to return some JSX or HTML. And what we're simply gonna do is go hello react and return that. And there's our first react component. So we need to pass that in as the first method. It's a self-closing element. We could just do this as well, but this looks a little bit cleaner. The second thing we wanna pass this function is the actual element we wanna load this component into. So we named our div uh, with an ID of app. So if we do document.get element by ID and pass it app. Apologies, I missed off the parentheses there for the function. And we should see some Re React loading. So as I was saying, it's important to know that the, the HTML here is rendered after the page loads. So if we were to look at view page source here, then what you'll see actually is an empty, empty div. See that? And that's what Google, and that's what a lot of spiders are looking when, when the page first loads, it's is looking at this initial load and then what it's probably doing is comparing it against what is actually loaded after a few seconds. But what you can see is that there's nothing inside of this div. And this is obviously the problem we're talking about when it comes to React. So now we do need to stay in code. You know, this is how React works. And this is, this is kind of, you know, the, the benefit of using something like React is, is actually using different states, different uh, classes and all the rest of it. So we've got our base class here. And now we want to go about creating our cards that we, we defined in our um, style guide. Now it's important to remind yourself of how this is constructed because we're gonna be basically constructing in the same way. So we've got a, a, an element here and I'll go into, this is actually a div. We have a heading um, and these have classes of card. Uh, this should be card header.
uh, we have a card image and a card text. So card text. So we've got some classes here we can hook onto and they will contain the style that we can then reference within our React components. Now we want to create a, what they call a functional component um, that will contain the HTML for our card. And it's important that you think of React in what they describe as smart and dumb components. Essentially a smart component is what's going to take, what's going to store all of the state, all of the events, all of the interactions, and then dumb components are purely aesthetic. So they don't care about what data they're given. I mean, they care about what data they're given, but they actually don't care what that data actually represents. They just they just display that data. When we create dumb components, you can actually see what I mean by all that. So if we create a function here and name it card, then we need to then return from that function some JSX. So thinking back to our component, we need a wrapping element. So what I mentioned before around, it doesn't really matter because we can actually define what the element is. As long as that element doesn't have any styling associated with it or whatever, um, we can actually name what the element is. And then the first one is going to be a header. Next one is going to be an image, which self-closes, so we can just do that there. I mean, image is a self-closing element anyway. Again, just a, so we haven't got anything in here, so let's just use that as an example there. I forgot the closing tag, but we're gonna self-close it there. Look into our code. And there we have an article with our HTML, and you can see that React has, has created an opening and closing HTML tag there. Another way you can do this, if you're not confident in writing code, is what you can do is if you go to your style guide page, so we've created a style, style guide page. We've got our component here that we wanna create. If we inspect the element, then what you've got here, you've got, there's, there's the makeup that makes up our our card element. So what we can do is click, right click, edit as HTML, and then we have all of this HTML that we can then copy and paste into our dumb component. Clean it up a little bit. Now we can see we've got a nice clean component. What React has done is actually given us its own way of adding classes, and we need to change that to class name. So now that we have our element rendering, it's time, time to move on to the second most kind of important concept of React, and that's props. And what that essentially is, is that we can pass in props to a component, and that component will do the job of actually rendering whatever it is you pass in. So we'll go into that, and that will start to make more sense as we dig, dig deeper into it. So the first thing we need to do in our component is define that we want it to receive what they call as props. This could, you could name this anything you'd like, and then we can start to use these props within our component. So if we say props there, and we're gonna name one props header, because that would make sense here, and you contain them in these curly brackets. The next one will be props paragraph. And again, you can name these whatever you want. And the third one will be quite interesting here because we have a, we have these two quotes here that will meet will, that will uh, render out a string. So we need to remove out those and put in curly brackets and say props dot image. So now this component is set up to receive props. Now, how do we send this component the props? Well, they look just like. HTML attributes. So on our card element here, which again is just rendering this component, we say header, and it can just be a string there. We say image, which is also gonna be a string, and we say paragraph, uh, which is also going to be a string. And we'll get into more um, advanced options maybe later down the line, but for right now, we'll just deal with strings. Now, we wanna pass this prop uh, the header as my special wombat. Um, and we're gonna say wombat, uh, their name is uh, 
John. John the Wombat. So if we go back to our style guide here and get the URL of the image, we can pass that in. So now this dumb component doesn't care what data it's representing. All its job is, is to represent or to present a card component. And then we define what data it's going to be. It should display in our, in our in implementation of the card component here. So if we save that, publish, then we can see that John the Wombat is displaying. So it's now say that we want to render out several of these uh, wombats and we can do that with something that they call state and this is going to be a real rough version of state right now um, it's not we're not going to do anything too crazy with it but I just want to demonstrate to you how we can render out multiple um, versions of this of this card component so in our what the constructor is a, is a method that we that all classes have it, it's the first method that gets called when a class loads so within here we want to put this dot state equals an object and we want to name the first ob item in the object wombats and this will be an array which we dictate by square brackets if you don't know what an array is it's a essentially a list of Things. So it could be a list of numbers, two, three. It could be a list of strings, which is, you know, it could be um, A, B, C. Or it could be a list of objects, which is what we're going to do now. So we're just going to create an object. Actually, we're going to create three objects, two, three. And within each of these, we're going we're gonna to have the data that we want to show in our wombat so let's just take this one the name as the first one uh, so we go we can we can name this whatever we want and we want it to be uh, my special wombat the image we're just going to use the same image in all three so i don't have to go away and, and try and find three separate images so the image and just to demonstrate that you can name these whatever you want i'm just going to name this one img and then this one's going to be paragraph. And then we're going to say, my name is. And in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this down to just the name. So if we change this to name and the first one is going to be John, I can then show you how we can morph uh, we can merge like a string that already exists within the page within the component with an object with the name that we define in it so we're going to change this to name that to name and then we're just going to pass it john so then we take this again create the same properties um we're going to say my special um wombat 2 and this is going to be uh, terry and then this one, we can create a third one. And the third one we're going to call obstacle. So now we have our list of wombats that we have. We have an array of wombats. And now we want to be able to loop through those and create a card component for every wombat item in this array. So within our return component, we can actually, we're going to cut that. We're going to keep that in our clipboard and we are going to loop through each of these wombats. So within this component, if we start out with a div here, I can show you how practically this starts to look. Just as a point, React components need to be wrapped in a div. <clears throat> you can't have two divs side by side like this. For this to work, you need to then wrap these two in an in a JSX element and a common thing to do is just to create an empty tag like that <clears throat> but we of course we don't need to care about that for right now we can just because we're going to use this wrapping um, we're going to be use, using this wrapping element to uh, render our render our wombats so we're going to oh, because we're going to be writing some JavaScript within the HTML now we're going to use our uh, curly brackets and we're going to go 
this dot state dot wombats. So that refers to this, this dot state there. And we're going to go map. What this is going to do is going to loop over the array and return a new instance of that array. Don't worry so much about that, but know that this is going to be our way to loop through. And this takes a function. So the f if we write our function there. There's our arrow function, and we need to return some JSX, which is going to be these brackets here. And then we can paste in there our component that we copied. Now, we obviously don't want my special wombat to be passed in there. We obviously don't want that image. We want to. We want these items from the array to be passed into these um, to, to into the instance of the card. So this is going to loop three times. So we're going to create three cards here. This component need uh, is going to have access to each item in that array. So we're just going to call this singular wombat. Again, this could be anything you want. And then we're going to say in here uh, wombat dot header and then wombat dot name and that's kind of it and you can start to see that cleans this up a little bit now we've got to close the opening curly bracket there this is needed before every inside of every constructor from a react component so we forgot to put that in there so we named ah it's img that's why img and then that's name and then within here, we of course need to now change this to name. And then we can go, my name is, you can see how these begin to start taking shape here. You can see here that we have our, our wombats. Now, I think I've missed a class here to say, These are cards, and then that will give us our display flex. And there we go. There's our React component. So the beauty of this now is that I can go into my style guide and then change the color or whatever of these things. So then when I go into here, and we can start to design our React components. Now we can't add HTML without having to dip into code. But again, I hope this is a bit of a happy medium between using React in your projects versus, you know, actually designing in, in Webflow. So I hope you enjoyed this one. If this gives you a taster of React and you think you might be interested in kind of seeing more as we dig into React, then maybe I can start to make a series of using React, um, basically a React series, but um, within Webflow. So if you enjoyed that and you want to learn about how to build more accessible, more SEO friendly, uh, more powerful Webflow websites for more people, then please subscribe. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, then of course, give it a like. Uh, and until next time, happy no coding. Mm -hmm.